I met her on the internet. My daughter needs help with Algebra 2. Please contact me, ASAP, Gina T. She gave me her address for an appointment, 25 Laurel Court. Rolling up her long, wooded driveway, I couldn't believe my eyes. Her house was enormous, easily five times the size of mine. Carved columns rose up to the sky. Two stone statues of lions flanked the front door. I grabbed the bronze knocker, carved in the shape of a boar's head, and swung it hard. Clank, clank, clank. For a minute, there was complete silence. Then I heard the thumps of footsteps and the clink of a lock. You must be Annie, said a short, plump woman with bright blue eyes. I'm Gina. As I stepped in, a strange feeling settled in my stomach. The house was weirdly empty. The kitchen didn't have a table. The living room had a single, dusty sofa. The air was damp, cold, musty, and all the lights were off. Only natural light pouring in from curtainless windows. Just moved in. I said, despite the lack of boxes. Oh, uh, yeah, she said hurriedly. Yeah, we're just moving in. Come on, Greta's in the study. She led me into a back room. A nervous-looking girl sat at the desk, her hands folded over a blank notebook. She was tall and lanky, with dark eyes and hair, unlike her mother. Greta didn't say much as we started the session. Since Algebra 2 classes begin with a review of Algebra 1, I wrote out some y equals mx plus b equations for her. She graphed the lines perfectly. Struggling, I thought. What kind of standards does his mother have? I tutored kids like that, where the mother thinks struggling is an A-. minus. So I rolled with the punches and gave her some more questions. As her pencil scratched away, I looked around at the study. Like the rest of the house, it was mostly empty. Like the rest of the house, it was mostly empty. The bookcase in the corner held only dust. Curiously, on the back of the door, there were long, indented lines that ran almost the entire height of it, almost like scratches. Where's your textbook? I asked when I ran out of questions to give her. She looked around. I don't have one, she replied. You didn't buy one yet, or the school didn't give you one yet? School, she asked, eyes unblinking. I don't go to school. Oh, a homeschooler. I dealt with them too. Generally, they were smarter and weirder than the public school kids, which fit Greta perfectly. I wrote out another equation and handed it to her. That's when the noise started. <coughs> A high-pitched whine coming from outside the door. What is that? I said before I could stop myself. Greta didn't reply. Her pencil scratched quickly over the paper, working on the problem. Greta? She ignored me, scribbling furiously over the page. Her hair hung limply over her face, concealing her expression. Fear pounded through my body. Greta, what is it? She wordlessly slid the piece of paper back to me. Under the chicken scratch of X's and Y's were six letters. Get out. Greta, what? She held a finger to her lips and shook her head. When I didn't move, she leaned over me and furiously wrote another word. Now. Stunned, I grabbed my bag. I walked over to the door, swung it open, stepped out into the hallway. That's when I understood. Gina, if that's even her real name, was in the kitchen. In her hand was a whirring, whining bone saw. The stove was on. 
The blue flame shimmered. A greased metal pan sat over it, the oil sizzling and popping. I ran to the door. My thundering footsteps drew the attention of Gina. She looked up, her eyes wide with fright. Then she stepped towards me. I yanked the door open. I ran over the stone walkway, the damp grass, and didn't stop until I was sitting in my locked car. Then I peeled out of the driveway and never looked back. By the time the police came, the house was empty. Well, emptier than it had been before. Greta and Gina were gone. The house, 25 Laurel Court, had been abandoned for months, they told me. In the basement, the police made a gruesome discovery. Three bodies were found. They were identified as local missing people. A professor, a teacher, a scientist. All of them were missing their brains.